Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Craft Time by Casey. I am Casey, and this is the multi-strand bracelet that we will be making today. I will be using um, the vast majority of the pieces from the March 2022 Bargain Bead Box. But this time, before we jump right into it, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to me so far. Uh, since my last video, I have surpassed 500, which is a very big milestone for me. So I just want to say that I greatly appreciate every one of you. And I love reading your comments. Um, you guys are just so incredibly kind. And I look forward to um, a hopefully very long future um, creating jewelry and getting inspiration from you and hopefully uh, inspiring you with the jewelry that I make. So once again, thank you so, so much. And if you would like to see how this particular bracelet came about, then stay tuned. Here we go. I am going to quickly go through what I will be using to create this multi-strand bracelet and then we will dive right into it. So first thing, I will be using two sets of chain nose pliers and that way I can manipulate things with both hands. I will be using my wire cutters right here and I will be using my crimp pliers as well. Um, and I'll go through each one of the, the beads as I get to each strand. Um, but for this first one, um, I'm using, I'll just grab some of them, the natural stone beads, the round beads that came in the bead box. And then I'm also using the, it looks like it's almost clear, um, round beads, but depending on how it hits the light, it definitely shows up those blues and greens. But I think it pairs really well with these natural stones. Um, and the only thing that I'm using from the bead box as far as the findings um, is the toggle clasp. This came in the March bead box. All the rest of the findings um, I'm using out of my own stash along with these small spacer beads. I am using 49 strand bead along wire in the color bright. And as you can see, I'm getting to the end of this one, uh, but it's okay. I've got plenty left. Um, I've got plenty extra. Um, and it calls for a number two crimp tube, which is what I will be using as well. So I have my first strand. And what I did is I cut approximately 12 inches, 11 to 12 inches. Uh, strands and that way I have room to do the uh, closures on both sides um, and I know that the wire is in the bright color the silver color but with all of the um, beads and the the findings the wire guardians uh, you won't be able to tell that the wire is silver so here we go I'm going to Put the jump ring on the end. Put a crimp tube on the end. And then put it through one side of the wire guardian. And I'm gonna pull it through to the other side. I'm, and I'm going to get that jump ring to go right up there. And I'm going to make sure that crimp tube goes through both wires like that. Or the wire goes through the crimp tube. All right. And I don't want that much. I don't want that much of a tail. So I'm going to pull it a little closer. And I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. 
and I'm going to, with a very gentle hand, slightly close, I'm gonna make sure the jump ring's on the other side, the wire guardian. You wanna be very careful because you can easily smash those wire guardians. I just wanna close it a little bit. So now that I have everything up towards the front with my crimp, with my crimp pliers, I'm going to go into that second divot and I'm going to smash that crimp tube. And that gives it that nice taco shape. I'm gonna turn it to the side. Close it in that first divot. And it does smash it, but for extra security, I always take it to that flat part on the end and give it a real good smash. And that closes it nice and tight. So now I'm gonna flip it over the other way, hold that jump ring on the end. I'm gonna get a crimp cover. And I'm going to place that crimp cover right over the crimp bead, just like that. And then I'm going to smash it. Just like that. And it looks like it's your first bead. All right. So that is how you make the opening of your strands. And um, and this will be, if you need to come back to making the strand, the beginning for each strand, it's made the exact same way. When you're using a toggle clasp, you want to make sure that you always start with a smaller bead on every single one of your strands because you wanna make sure the, the bracelet part of it, the bar part is, is able to fit through. So I'm gonna use this smaller rondelle, natural stone. Spacer, natural stone, spacer, and now I want to make sure they're falling the right way. So I can go ahead and put that tail through the bead. All right, so that's what your end looks like right now. Stone. Spacer. Stone. Spacer. Stone. Spacer, stone, spacer. Stone. All right, so here is the first end. You have eight stone beads. And I don't pay attention to any particular color. I like that there's a mixture of them. So I grab I grab them at random. Um, and I think that turned out really nice. So now I will start the center piece. I'm gonna put the round glass spacer stone. Spacer, 
round glass. Spacer, glass. Stone. Spacer, glass. spacer. So that is what the center looks like right after that end. So you have three of the clear glass that, that you can see those tones in depending on how they move right in the center. So now we're going to do this exact same thing on the other end um, and I'll meet back up to do the closure. All right. So as you can see, we did the exact same thing on the other side. So now we are going to do the closure for this. So I want to put a crimp tube. Jump ring. And then wire guardian. Through one side and then flip it over through the other. So just like before, we wanna make sure that jump ring gets on up there. So we want to make the, sure the jump ring is up there in the wire guardian and that we put both ends through the crimp tube. Since these beads are a little bigger, we can go ahead and put it through the last few. That'll help to pull it a little snug. So I'm going to do what I did before and I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and with a very gentle hand, I'm going to slightly close that wire guardian and then I want to pull it nice and snug. So at this point, you can go into that second groove of your crimping pliers and smash. Got the taco right there. Flip it to the side. Go into that first groove, smash. And it closes it, but I like it to be closed a little more. So I'm going to take it with that flat part and give it a good smash. That way it's nice and closed. So then I'm going to hold it on this side and I'm going to close that crimp cover right over the crimp tube. Just like that. And then I'll flip it over. To where it's up just like that and then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and smash it smash it a little bit more just like that and then I'm going to take my cutters and get up in there as close as I can Snip off that end, and then you can kind of, that one just sank right in, but you can kind of shove it in there. So there is our first one. On to the next one. All right, here we go. For this one, 
we are using the light blue round beads and these are the ones that are not perfectly shaped like they're not perfectly round and I know it's hard to tell on the camera but they actually have they have a like a coloration to them they're pretty awesome um, and then we're going to use these cute little bird spacer beads these um, these are as the description in the bead box says uh, just whimsical bird motifs so I think these are really cute um, so we will be using them for this strand all right so just like before you want to make sure you start each strand with a smaller bead so I'm using the light blue uh, bicones that came in and then I'm going to use a regular I say regular a round spacer just for the end next to the bicone and then at this point it's genuinely just going to be a back and forth you're going to use a round and a bird round bird so when we get down here we want to make sure that the tail is going through just like that and then the rest of it is going to sit just like that so I will skip forward to the end. You're just gonna do a back and forth, uh, big blue round bird. All right, here you go. And I, as you can see, I put the two uh, little ones on the end there as well, the round spacer and the light blue bicone, just like I did on this side. And that is this strand. I'm gonna go ahead and close it up and I'll be right back with you. If Remember, if you need help on the closure, go back to that first one, the first strand, and it's the exact same process. And there you have it. There is our second strand. On to the next one. All right, so now we are on to our third strand. And this is going to be one of the smaller strands. So I already have my beginning here where I have my guardian, my crimp cover over my smashed crimp tube, I've got the jump ring, and I am ready to start wiring now or beading. So remember, um, if you need help on how to do this, you can always go back to that one in the beginning. It's the same process. Now, since these beads are small, there's no need to start with a smaller bead. And this is going to be, same as before, a back and forth. And I think I will pick these up off of the mat with the string because it will make it go much faster. All right. So now I'm gonna put that tail back through the last few beads. All right. All right. So there is the pattern, quite simple, back and forth, bicone, round spacer, all the way to the other end. I'll meet back up at the end. All right, and there you have it. There is the third strand, and I've already put the closure on the end. So we are now ready to go to the last strand. On to the next one. All right, so for this last strand, I've already got the beginning on it. Once again, if you need that, go ahead and head back to the front of the video where we did the first strand. It's the same for everyone. So we are going to be using the four millimeter round marine blue crystals. These are the faceted marine blue crystals. And I am using my own spacer beads and I will show you up close once I get a few of them on
So you're just going back and forth, back and forth. So here we go. And as you can see, these spacer beads look just like that crimp cover. Um, so they actually fit in really, really nicely. They are just antique bronze round spacer beads. Um, I believe I got them from Panda Hall off of Amazon. But they look really nice when they're on um, a bracelet like this with the crimp cover. It just goes right along. So this is the pattern for the entire bracelet. I'll meet you back at the end. All right. So here is the last strand. And I absolutely love the effect of it just flowing seamlessly into the crimp cover at the end. Um, it looks very uniform and it just, it goes together and I like it. All right. So we now have all of the strands for our multi-strand bracelet. I feel like that is a good order. Um, I want to put a smaller strand in between each one of the larger strands just so they kind of fall the right way. So... I'm going to get a larger jump ring. There we go. Larger jump ring. And I'm going to put it on, make sure I put them all in in the same order. So I'm going to start with the bicone. Go with the natural stone. Blue one. The darker blue one, I should say. And then the larger one with the birds. And then I'm going to close that jump ring. All right. So here is how they're laying right now. And now I'm going to put them on the other side. So I want to start with the same side. And I want to put the I want to put the end of the toggle clasp on there. And close that jump ring. So I'm going to go back to the other side. and put on the bar. The last step that I'm gonna do is add one of these cute little bird charms that came with it. And I think that'll go nicely with the um, That'll go nicely with the uh, bead spacer birds. So I have a smaller jump ring. I'm going to put it on the jump ring here at the end. Put on the charm. So I put on the charm and I close that jump ring. So I've got the charm hanging on the end. All right. So here is our finished piece. I think it turned out quite nice. Then of course you've got the toggle and the little bird charm on the back. I think that's a nice little touch. I'm going to set my bracelet up on my display and I'll be right back. All right. So here it is here is the final product my multi-strand bracelet using the march 2022 bargain bead box um and i am 
very, very happy with how it turned out. I think it looks awesome. Um, I love the little bird charm. Um, I think it just kind of adds that little finishing touch to it. So if you like this video and you'd like to see other videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, give me a like and leave a comment. Tell me what you tell me what you think about this bracelet. Did you did it inspire you to possibly create one yourself? Let me know. I absolutely love reading your comments. You guys are so kind. Um, it is truly one of the best parts of my day. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.